Hey guys, Roku here back with some more League of Legends content. In this video, we're going to talk about all of Darius's matchups in the top lane, and we're going to talk about how to either beat them or at the very least survive against them. So I usually make these videos once or twice a year, and it's the last one I made is in the summer, so I decided to update it to make sure that we all know how to fight these champions. So if you're getting into game, make sure you have this video like on standby to help you win the matchup before it starts. I'm making the tier list using the tier list tool on wicked.gg, the website of my friend. Check it out if you want to make your League of Legends tier list. Anyway, let's just get right into it. I'm going to go from left to right, bottom to up, and we're going to start with the free lane tier. So the free lane tier is essentially just self-explanatory. The, the matchups are basically free, okay? You can be the worst Darius player in the world and still win these because your champion just kind of beats them. Or... It's like there's one trick that you have to do to beat them, and it's like super easy to do, and it just takes no effort. So, the first matchup we're going to talk about here is Cho'Gath. The thing with the Cho'Gath matchup is that the second you have Ghost up, there's essentially nothing that Cho'Gath can do to stop you from killing him. Because his Rupture, although it's kind of fast, you can very easily dodge it with the move speed provided by the Ghost, okay? So, as long as you dodge Cho'Gath's you know, knockups. You can basically kill him on cooldown. And the thing about this matchup is, until Cho'Gath gets his executed level 6, you can kill him at very, very low HP because he's very susceptible to getting, you know, hit by Qs and just, you know, destroyed. Even when Darius is like 2-300 health and Cho'Gath is at full health. So, yeah, this is a very bad matchup for the Cho'Gath. And to crush him even harder, just, like, just dodge the knockups. You don't have to build anything or go any special build. Garen. This is a problem for a lot of the more, you know, new Darius players because they, they basically just go into Garen, fight him, and they die, and they don't know what happened. But the basic idea against the Garen matchup is that you have to avoid his spin. And his spin, his E, is right now most of his damage. Basically speaking, right, they did a rework of Garen a while ago where they shifted his damage to his E, right? His E is just scales all attack speed, and it does a ton of damage. So if you want to beat Garen, you have to kite his E. How do you do this? Now, the easiest way is to just use your ghost. If you have ghost up and it Qs on you and it spins, just activate the ghost and run out of the spin. And the best part is, like, you have so much move speed that you can run out of it and when it's over, just run back in and kill him. And another thing to know about this is that you can actually activate your ghost while you're silenced. So there are no issues of him silencing out of your ghost. So the matchup is super free if you have a ghost. If you don't have ghost, you can also still kite him using your W. So when he jumps up to do his Q, you press your W, you W him, and you walk out because it's slow. You can also use your E, but you have to make sure you use your E before he spins because if you like pull him while he spins, you're just gonna like deal the damage to yourself essentially because you're putting him in position to damage you with a spin. So yeah, TLDR, avoid a spin, and you're good to go. Maokai. There really isn't any trick to this matchup. It's just kind of self-explanatory. Just kill him. Poppy. Similar case as Maokai, you just basically have to kill her, but there are a few things to watch out for. One, you have to be very careful in short trades against her because she actually has multiple tricks up her sleeve, experienced Poppy players, and they can kind of weasel their way out of just winning a ton of trades and then eventually just kill you, okay? in like Because Poppy has a ton of burst. And so just... Play the short fights carefully, use your Q properly. And the other thing to watch out for is to not stand in between her and a wall. And also try to understand that her, you know, her push thing is kind of like a movement ability. So if she goes behind a minion, she can, you know, use that minion to get away from you. So it's like, just know her abilities and you should be good to go, basically. Rengar. Against Rengar, you should basically just not interact with the lane too much level 1 because... When Rengar has Ignite, he can just kill you level 1 because of his Q stacks, right? If he jumps on, I mean, he gets a stack of his Q and he can keep doing that. And when he's at full stacks, he can go in and try to cheese kill you. And he's actually very good at doing this. But the thing about the matchup is that after level 3, it's just completely free. Okay, so once you get level 3 against Rengar, he is cat food instead of a cat. So yeah, just kill him. Singed. The thing with Singed is that um, you have to stop him from proxying. And you have to keep in mind that his flip flips you to the other side of them, okay? Two things. So one, how do you stop him from proxying? You do this by having control of the lane. And when you just spawn, you do it by walking with your minions, okay? So you don't want to scout for your team. You don't want to stay in lane. You don't want to cheese. You just want to walk with your minions because if Singe gets to 
proxy your minions level one, that can actually be quite devastating, especially because in lower ranks, your jungler is not going to help you very much. But just walk with your minions, and if he steps up, just W him and kill him. Since you typically starts the poison trail level one to you know um, clear the wave, and without it, he can't really do anything to stop you from killing him. Okay, so yeah. And the other thing is to just have control of your lane and poke him when he gets close to try to interact with the wave because he really cannot touch the wave if you're on it. The other thing of be careful of his pull direction, his, his flip direction, is more so when you're chasing him. Because what a Singe can do is, let's say um, this is his turret, this is Singe, and this is you. So you're hitting him, chasing him. What he can do is he can walk behind you and then flip you to behind him and walk to his turret safely. Okay, so just when he's trying to do this, just walk back to kite him back. Okay, so just be aware wary of this trick. But aside from that, he's a free matchup. Cyan's also a pretty free matchup. There's not really any advice you need against him. Just make sure you don't take too many bad trades. Make sure you're you know aware of the jungler, I guess, because Cyan has pretty decent um gank setup. Viego, honestly, just kill him early on. He can't really match up to you. Just don't get kited too hard. Yasuo, the Yasuo matchup is pretty similar to like the Rengar matchup. You don't want to fight him level 1 because he basically has two autos with his auto attack and his Q, whereas you just have your auto W, so you'll basically just lose via Ignite. And his level 2 is also a big power spike, so when he gets his QE, but from level 3 onwards, you just kill him whenever you want to kill him. Like, it's really easy to just put him down, so just wait until level 3. Um, if you're really having a trouble... If you're having trouble against this matchup where the Yasuo player is just better than you, you can go Ninja Tabis to make it easier, but you really shouldn't have any problems against him. Anyway, so, now we're heading into the Darius favored matchups. First off, a call the Darius favored matchups are just matchups where, like, you can still lose, but you'll probably win, or at least you'll be in charge of the lane. Akali. The thing with Akali is that, one, you have to understand the range of her Q, her poke thing, and try not to get poked down too hard or time your Q so that when she's hitting you with that, you're hitting her with your Q. And the other thing is to understand that early game, she can't really do anything to you, okay? She's very weak early. She does have a very strong level 6 power spike, but until then, you basically have free reign over the lane. So just try to just W, like, she, she, like try to like W kill her, try to use your abilities properly, try to cancel her shuriken jump, just kill her in lane early. And it's very easy to do so because most of them go like ignite teleport and they don't go flash. So they, can, they, they can't get away from you. So yeah, um, just make sure you don't like let her get to level six easily because if you're not ahead by level six, then there's a very good chance that she actually wins the all-in because their level 6 power spike is huge. Next is Camille. The Camille matchup is pretty deceptive, but also not that difficult. The basic idea is this. One, you got to understand her W range. So, like, kind of like how people dodge your Q, you have to dodge her W. Two, you have to make sure that she cannot touch the lane with her auto attacks because once she gets the move speed of her Q, she can get off very good trades against you, and because she has move speed, you really can't retaliate, and her W is going to slow you because, you know, it's easier to land her W when she has a lot of move speed. The other trick to keep in mind is canceling her hook shot. I've done a video on the Camille matchup in the Know Your Enemy series where I show how to do this hook shot. But basically speaking, if you if your pull lands on her, once she starts moving, like her hook lands on the wall, she starts moving, and then you pull her, you cancel her hook shot dash. So just try to get the timing of that down, and you should be able to just destroy her with with no problems. Okay, so um. Any other trick? Not really. One thing I can definitely like give advice for is that when you're chasing a Camille, never use your Q because when you use your Q, she's just gonna hook shot away because you can't cancel with your E, right? So just auto W spam her with autos, 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 and when she hook shots, use your E, and then once she has no more E, then you use your Q. And EQ combo is really imported into it because she can just use her ult to point and click on you and avoid your Q. Next champion is Cled. Honestly. Um, Kled is a bit difficult to fight early on if he has Ignite. You kind of have to just dodge his bear trap, but if you can't do that, then you should just play safe and wait until you have Ninja Tobbies. Once you get Ninja Tobbies, you just beat him in the all-in quite easily. He can't really do too much because most of his damage is through the auto attacks. If he goes for the tank Kled build, you just go Divine Sunder and you beat him quite easily. Um, Malphite. An annoying matchup for sure, but nothing really to worry about. The basic idea is if Malphite throws his um, cheese rolls at you, you know, to poke you, 
there's a very small window of time where you can actually pull him. Okay, so if you if if he's coming up, walking to throw that at you, and you walk directly towards him, you can pull him during his throw animation. Okay, so just like try to get the timing of it right. Um, I don't think I have a guide on it, but you can actually pull him. If you get the timing right, you can pull him out of his, you know, cheese roll throw animation every single time. You just have to understand that, like, when you're walking towards him, right, you have to walk directly towards him. No medium block, not below him, not above him, directly towards him. And you can press E at the, towards the end of his throw animation and just, you know, land it. I kind of do this a bunch of times on stream, but yeah. If you do have trouble against the matchup and he wins, just go Divine Sunder and you destroy him anyway. Mordekaiser. The Mordekaiser matchup is not that difficult. It just gets difficult if you don't get a lead by level 6. The basic idea is, one, never stand alone. Just stand next to your minions so his Qs do the single damage. That's a big thing. Two, try to understand that like his pull, when done backwards, can actually stop you from chasing him and killing him. And that is basically it. Honestly, you just gotta kill him. Just make sure you don't get punked down too hard. And in his ultimate, try your best to just kite him because he actually wins in his ultimate. QSS is a great item into him, so there's that to consider. But honestly, just if you just go to default build with Conquer and stuff, you should be able to take care of him. Divine Sundry is good if you want to beat him in a 1v1, but honestly, just get the Strybreaker because his team is going to be a bigger problem than him. Nasus. Nasus is a very, very easy matchup to just beat because the basic idea with him is that like early on, he's just really really pathetic right nasus can't really do anything against you early on it's just that people have problems fighting him with his level six so how do you fight nasus who has his ultimate up you don't okay when nasus has his ultimate up and he uses it you no longer win the fight because his q spam gets so like quick that he just does way too much dps for you to kill him in time okay so when he ults up just run away, okay? Pull him, W or Strybreaker, and just walk away. And the best part about it is that even if the Nasus is ahead of you somehow, but he doesn't have ultimate, he's the freest kill imaginable. Nasus without ultimate is just, like, no threat at all, okay? So just abuse that, right? Bait his ultimate and get out. If you have too much issues against him, you can actually go phase rush to actually better kite him, to just avoid his wither a bit. Phase rush is great into this matchup because, so, you know, because of his wither. But you can also make do with Conqueror. <laughs> Pantheon. The Pantheon matchup is quite weird, but it's similar to the some of the other matchups where you just gotta play safe until level three. And once you get armor, and once you like well until in level three you can actually beat him if you can, you know, kite around his stuff properly, if you can kind of avoid his spears. But if you take any poke, then you should probably not go for a fight against him because his ignite combined with his Q execute is quite difficult to manage with. Um, you should be looking for all-ins against Pantheon once you get armor, so Ninja Tobbies is great. You can also go for Warden's Mail, just armor in general is great into Pantheon. So just get that, and once you get your armor after your first back, he's a free kill. Level 6, he's also kind of free because you get a combat ultimate, whereas he just gets an ultimate that's like a more of a movement thing. So there's that thing to look out for as well. The issue with his difficulty in the, the lane is that, like... You don't really have prio early, so you can actually just mess you up and get a lot done outside of lane. So, yeah, um, Pantheon definitely has prio early, which can basically be the determining factor in some games. Shen. The basic idea with Shen is to just be careful of his sword. Like, when he leaves his sword somewhere, and I all the dare players just ignore this, but basically, when he recalls the sword to him and it goes through you, he gets a ton of attack speed and it slows you. So he's going to get off his... 100 damage, magic damage, all of the off when you non-stop, bang, 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 and just chunk out half your HP where you can't even fight against him. So, yeah, try to avoid being between him and a sword. And also, try not to get taunted into a big minion wave or into a turret. That's that's another way where you can just get absolutely demolished. Stratebreaker is great into him because it just lets you slow him and not get kited out by him too much when he just, you know, taunt dashes away. You have to make sure that you know you have pretty good macro against Shen, though, because... Um, whenever there's a fight going on elsewhere in the map, and Shen looks like he's going to want to teleport, you want to just chase him and cancel his teleport with your pull, because if Shen gets there, it's going to be quite disastrous for your team, okay? But just make sure that the jungler isn't near you when you do this, because, like, if the jungler is there, then you're basically just sacrificing your life for your team, so maybe it's worth it sometimes, but I'd recommend if the jungler is up top near the Shen, just let him teleport and try to get stuff in top lane. 
The next matchup is Trendemir. Trendemir is like not the most easy matchup for Darius because Trendemir can does, does actually just outscale it quite hard. But in lane, you basically outtrade him quite easily, okay? The trick that most Trinomirs do is they walk up to you, they auto-attack you, and they spin away. Okay, this is a trick that every single Trinomir does. So, he does it one, two times, and the next time he does it, just pull him out of his, like, spin. And then he's just, like, waiting to die, essentially. He, he has no other way of defending himself. So, yeah, don't let him auto-attack the wave and get his Fury up, because if Trinomir has his Fury up, he's more likely to just, you know, crit you seven times in a row and kill you. So, there's that to be careful of. Don't let him have, you know free reign to auto attack the minions and CS, just poke him, make sure he's forced to be on his like back foot. Level six all-ins are kind of weird because you're not actually firing him, you're basically just kiting him. So just fight him until he uses his ultimate and then just run using your ghost. Phase Rush is wonderful for this. So Phase Rush actually counters Trinbeer in lane if you're having problems with the matchup, but you should be able to make do with just Conqueror. Okay. When he is in his ultimate, just make sure you attack him once like, before the ultimate is over, because then your bleed stacks will do enough to actually kill him, okay? Provided he's used this Q before he's ulted, okay? So, yeah, just honestly kite him. Like, fight him, get him to use his ult, and then kite him, and you should be good to go. Ninja Tobbies is great, Warden's Mail is great, Aranduin's Rush, though annoying, is great, but honestly, you should be good to go with Stride, because Stride is like, you know, it's the absolute kiting item. Urgot, there's not really much to go into this matchup, just kill him, honestly. He's not really a threat until level 6, unless you fight him in like a big mini wave and he like flips you and slows you. But level 6 on, he has to land both his flip and his ultimate to kill you. So if you dodge either one, then he's a free kill. Why? He needs his ultimate on you to kill you, right? That's Without his ult, he cannot kill you. But his flip's important because if he doesn't land the flip then you're basically not going to be in range for him to get most of his shotgun knees off. So you can just walk away from him and kite him. So, like, without Urgot's ultimate landed and his flip to position you for his shotgun knees, then you can't. Then he can't really kill you. So just make sure you understand your power and make sure he doesn't cheese you or, like, get away from you using his, like, dash, you know? You can also cancel his dash, by the way. So the way his dash works is this, right? He has two phrase phases. He has the charge up phase, when he's dashing, and then he has the actual dash. Make sure that your E lands when he's dashing, okay? So when he has the charge up, then press your E, because by the time your E animation plays out, then he's gonna start dashing, okay? That's how you time it. Yon. Yon is another, like, Darius' favorite matchup. Early on, he's just, like, free pickings, but the issue with him is that once he gets two items, you can't really sideline against him, so you have to bully him in lane quite a bit. And the other issue with him is that his CC is quite annoying, okay? I don't know why Riot thought this champion was a good idea, but they just made him. One of the worst parts about trying to one one Yon is that he has a lot of CC, and during his CC, he can just do a ton of damage. So, yeah, you have to avoid his Q knockup or his ultimate using your move speed or your flash. It's vital. You have to do because if he can get you, like, in this chain of being knocked up over and over again, he can kill you before you even have a chance to fight back, okay? And once he gets two items, you can only beat him if you have Serpent's Fang, basically. Otherwise, you can't beat him. Alright, so we're heading into the more skill matchups. Now, the skill matchups are basically just self-explanatory. The better player wins, but there's also the, um, you know, you can win, basically, if you're the better player, okay? I don't know what <laughs> else I gotta say. Alright, so, Akshan, he's basically a newer pick ever since he got released. It's just another cheese range top laner, but his range is quite low, so you can basically get a hold of him quite easily. And his grapple hook, or whatever he has, is so slow that you can pull him out of it like 10 out of 10 times, you know, without any issues. Because he has to actually stand still to use it, kind of like Camille. But instead of Camille, he doesn't just go straight into it, he kind of goes sideways a bit slowly, so you have more time to pull him out of his um, grapple hook thing. So, yeah, honestly, just... Wait until you have your level 3 and then go for the fight and kill him. Because in the all-in, Darius is way more powerful than him. And Ninja Tabius helps a lot with that. Strikebreaker also. But he has a lot of annoying poke. Like, he has a lot of move speed and his boomerang goes through minions. So just try your best to avoid your, his poke. Try your best to stand far near your minions. And then try to stay out of the way of his boomerang so it doesn't hit you. And when you have your level 3, just perma-chain all-in him and you'll kill him every time. Dr. Mundo. I actually have a video talking about this matchup specifically. TLDR. One, hide behind your minions. Don't get hit by his hatchets ever. Two, poke him when he goes to auto-attack the minions. 
and three actually get life sleep and you have to get executed during a calling and stuff like that to actually kill him okay um that's basically it against mundu you just have to dodge his cleavers the, way, the reason why this is a skill matchup, or at least just a boring matchup, is that the Mundu can just make the decision to not go into the melee range of the minions, just not even auto-attack the minions, just spam hatchet, at which point it's just a farm lane. So you should just try to set up a freeze then, and you know if he messes up and steps up, just go for a kill. But yeah, this is less of a skill matchup, or more like a, like a boring matchup, because no one's going to win, if both parties play properly. Fiora. Fiora is quite a complicated matchup. I have a video on how to beat Fiora along with the other four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. It's in my Know Your Enemy series, but the basic idea is to one, know her vital spawn, which I explained in that video. So yeah, just know her vital spawn. It's like north and uh, up and right and bottom left, I think. I don't know how to like, because I got, <laughs> okay, sorry, but I have to do everything in reverse because of the camera so north and east and south and west these are two groups and every time you hit a vital of one group a vital of the other group appears so north it's definitely not going to be um east but it's definitely going to be south or west so it's like you know it's possibly flips between groups so you have to just know how it spawns i explain this in more detail in that video you have to make sure she doesn't repost your e then you're doomed you have to kind of just kite her and, you know, put your back against the wall to make sure she doesn't get that last vital for her ultimate. There are many of tricks you can do against There are many tricks you can do against her, but it all starts with knowing her how her vitals spawn and just not giving her free vitals. That's it, okay? As long as you can keep your vitals away from her, you can kill her quite easily. But if she can land a lot of vitals, she just destroys you. If she's in the top left or the bottom right of you, there is a chance where she can just RNG vitals that are right next to each other, so don't do that, okay? Just don't do that, because then she could just get a bunch of vitals. So never keep her in the top left or the bottom right of you. Or either, always either top right or bottom left. Those are two locations you want her, because if she hits a vital, then she has to actually move to get the other vital, okay? Uh, so, yeah. Um... The next matchup is just, ah, oh, geez, it's such a complicated matchup, the Fiora one, but I explained it better in the video. The Gnar matchup. Um, the Gnar matchup is basically um, just another boring range matchup, but he doesn't actually, actually have the range to be too oppressive. It's essentially just a big farm lane. One, learn how to cancel his jump. Two, try to be good at juking things when he's in his mega form, because like if you don't juke his things, he's just going to keep you in CC, get a trade off, and just jump away. And three, get Stridebreaker. This matchup is way more playable once you get Stridebreaker. The slow is huge, but until then, you can only kill him if he messes up, okay? You can't go for all, hin all, all hints, all ins when he has no minions behind him to double jump on. So there's that to watch out for. But if he does have minions behind him, then you probably shouldn't go for an all in. A trick you can do is this, okay? You ghost, and you walk in, like, behind the Gnar. And if he jumps on top of you, you can just pull behind you and actually pull him out of the jump. So it's a trick that I do a lot against NAR players, especially if they're not really that experienced. So, yeah, overall, if both players play properly, it's just, an, like, an even boring farm lane. Graves top. Graves is just a, another boring farm lane, but he is so low range that you can actually land Qs and e pull him properly. So, like, just try to go for kills early on, because once Graves scales up, it's actually quite difficult to beat him, especially because he just gets a ton of armor using his E, okay? So just... Kill him early in lane, otherwise you're going to have a very bad time later on, okay? And he scales, like, crazy, like, hard in the super late game. He, he just, like, crits 1k autos with, like, nobody's business and just kills everyone in, like, a second. So, yeah, just put him down and put him down early. Illawi, dodge her E, honestly. <laughs> Before level 6, you can just kill her as much as you want. But after level 6, you have to just dodge your E, because if you don't dodge the E, then she just ults, gets two ghosts, and just destroys you with all the tentacles, so yeah, dodge E. Irelia, funnily enough, the exact same gameplay, just dodge her stun, her E also, the same key, funny, but yeah, with Irelia, um, there's a lot more things to just kind of be, like, careful of, but you can just ignore all that and just dodge her E and you should be fine. Just try to make sure you dodge it in relation to the first place she puts it on, so... Like, not in relation to her, but in relation to the first place she puts them. Because, basically, when champions throw out skill shots, you can always dodge it in relation to them. But, 
her skill shots are like on their own. So she puts out one and then she puts out the other. And the other, like this, the attack comes between the point she put it on first and the second point. So you have to dodge it in relation not to her, but to the first point she put it on, okay? And while you're doing this, don't take too many autos. Kale. Um, against Kale, you just gotta kill her early if you can. Just try to make sure you set up like freezes and stuff on your side of lane so you can just run her down with Ghost. Because otherwise, once it gets to the late game, late game, it's just a nightmare. She scales up way too hard and she can actually just 1v9 at the game. So yeah, um, Stridebreaker is great. Just destroy her early on and there shouldn't be too many problems. Or the Orn matchup is completely just all wave clear. Just make sure the wave's on your side of the lane because he trades quite well. Never take short trades against Orn. He's just really good at short trades because his short trades also involve like crowd control. So he flame bursts you, he autos you, and then just dashes back. And the CC is so long that like you can't actually catch him and cancel his dash. Okay. So try to use your ghost to walk out of his flame breath. Try to, when he goes with a clap, start your W so that he gets slowed while he's auditing you so you can actually catch up to him when he's, you know, dashing back. Don't E him while he's doing the flame breath because then he's, his flame breath makes him immune to CC. There's that to look out for. And um, your E can actually cancel his dash too. If, he's, if you can kind of avoid his CC, you can actually cancel his dash. It's kind of slow. It's doable. So, yeah, just make sure you hit him, kill him in all-ins because, like, he's really good at short trains. I'm speaking of all-ins. Um... Level 6 when he calls his ultimate, and he has to, he calls the ultimate, and then he has to bash it again to, like, use it, right? But if you pull him before he bashes it, then he can't really just, he, he can't, you know, hit it, okay? So if you pull him before his ult goat thing gets to him, and, like, while it goes through him, you pull him, you basically nullify his ultimate, and all he gets is, like, one auto attack. So, yeah, Renekton. Renekton can be very hard if the Renekton player is good, but thankfully most Renekton players are doo-doo. Just try to make sure you kite him. Try to understand his um his own range. Like, he also has his own Q. Try to understand, like, how big that is so you can stay out of it. Um, Honestly, just don't let him, like, escape you because what Renekton can do is, like, go through a unit and he can dash twice. So if you're chasing him, it's the, kind of the same thing as Cinch where... If you're chasing him, he can just walk behind you and dash through you twice, and that just, like, puts him in a very safe distance. Um, try to kite him. That's very important against him, because when he's in his ulted form, and the more he hits you, the more he gets his, you know, passive fury, and it just lets him get, all, get off these crazy strong abilities. Don't let him hit the minions, because without his powered up abilities, he doesn't do any damage, but with them, he just, you know, outtrades you quite well. So, yeah, try to keep control of the lane. Try to just poke him off of it if he walks up. You can also use your W while he's Wing you to stun you, to, st to slow him so that it's like a bit more difficult for him to get away. Digitopies is great into him, but um, yeah. Uh, just <sighs> honestly, Renekton is such a bad champion that I don't even see anybody playing him, so like I don't even know why I'm saying this. <laughs> Poor Renekton, man. Riven. Um, Riven is another complicated matchup like Fiora that has so many dimensions. And I've already done a video on Riven, so go check out my Know Your Enemy playlist. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And, like, in that Know Your Enemy playlist, I have a video where I discuss Fiora, Riven, and I think Aurelia. And also, like, I just, I just, in that playlist, I have a bunch of matchups, so just, you can basically find it in that video. So, yeah. But the general idea against Riven is that you have to use your E to cancel her third Q. You have to make sure your W doesn't stun you, because that's where she sets up her most of her combos. And you have to get her to waste her abilities in team in, in like fights. If you're in our melee range and he has and she has all of her abilities, then you're gonna die. Because she just one shots you. But if you can use your ghost to kind of kite her cues and stuff, then you can eventually just get away from her and just, you know, um like get her to waste her damage to actually get to you. Okay? Her Q is all of her damage, but you have to force her to use her Q to get on top of you. Cause then her damage is gone and you can just do your own combo and execute her. Set, just kite him with your ghost. Don't stand in his W. Make sure you can you do EQs and stuff so that he doesn't ult you and avoid your Q. Land your Qs, that's super important. And just if he doesn't level his W, he's a free kill. Don't stand like you know on the other side of him when he has a minion. Just so that you don't get stunned. Stuff like that. And he should be good to go. He's another matchup I have broken down in detail if you want. Vladimir. Um the Vladimir matchup is quite boring because all he does is just cs so it's like there's not really much you can do aside from just you know get anti-heal 
put the wave on your side of the lane and just, you know, pull him and then go for an all-in. But if he has phase rush, you can kind of just get away, but still, okay? <coughs> this matchup is just wave control, so... Freeze the lane outside your turret and just run him down when he tries to, like, you know, step up to farm, okay? And please don't miss your E's, because if you don't E him, then you're never going to kill him. Volley Bear, another matchup I've covered in my Know Your Enemy series, but basically speaking, um... Don't get hit by his lightning thing, okay? If you get hit by that, you're slowed, you take a ton of damage, and you take his Ws because you're slowed and you can't really kite him, okay? So the idea is to just get out of this, but most Volley Bears use their Q to combo with E and get it both, like, at the same time, okay? So you have to just, like, kite his Q and his E, and the best way to do this is just Ghost, okay? Ghost, like, Volley Bear beats Darius, but Ghost beats Volley, Volley Bear. So just when you have Ghost, just kite him like a dog, and then when he's out of his key, when you dodge it, you just go back in and destroy him, okay? Just make sure you use your ghost to kite him properly, because if he lands his abilities on you, then you're just toast. Wukong. Another matchup I have a video on. He's in the same video with York, Wukong, Tom Kench, and Volley Bear. You basically beat Wukong by not queuing into him and just using your auto attacks properly. If you have good wave control, you can actually run him down pre-6, like... His level 6 power spec is huge, but before then, you can basically just bully him quite effectively. Just don't Q him, right? Just use your auto attacks properly and don't Q him unless he uses, like, you know, ways of avoiding your Q, right? EQ is a quite powerful combo into him because he has two ways to avoid your Q, so learn your EQs. And honestly, just kite his auto attacks with your ghost, and you should be good to go. That's pretty much it for the skill matchup tier. Like I said, you can also watch the Wukong matchup in my Know Your Enemy playlist. I have it, like, broken down into very big detail. Be difficult to win tier. These champion, these matchups are quite difficult to fight against because they fundamentally just beat you. You can destroy them, like if they mess up or play it badly. But um, let's just say that like they either scale back anyway, so they're gonna beat you eventually, or it's like it's such a stupid mistake that they're probably not gonna make it. Okay, Aatrox. The the H the Aatrox matchup is kind of difficult because. In higher ranks, and this is a thing for higher ranks, in low ranks, the Aatrox player doesn't know what he's doing, so you can just run him down and kill him over again, but in higher ranks, Aatrox can actually destroy Darius, because Aatrox fundamentally outranges Darius, okay? To even approach Aatrox to fight him, you have to take damage. And if the Aatrox player spaces properly, he's gonna do his damage, poke you a bit, and then get out of the range, okay? So, he's just gonna do this over and over again, he's just gonna poke you, and... The basic thing that's going to happen is that, like, you can't even walk up the trade with him because he's just going to poke you down out of the lane, okay? But, you know, with wave control, you can kind of still ghost him down as long as you don't get hit by all of his Qs because then he heals up too much to be killed. Anti-heal is great. Armor is great into him. Just make sure you avoid his Qs. When he has his W on you, walk sideways because that's, like, the quickest way to get out of it. Never walk away from him or towards him because then it's, like, towards him, you're getting into range for more of his Qs. Away from him, you're getting into, like, you know... You're not going to get away from him if you're just walking away from him. Just walk to the sides. It's the quickest way to get out of his W. And yeah, um, if you have armor and anti-heal, just all in him. Just force the all in and you will win, but provided you actually dodge the Qs. So TLDR, dodge the Qs, get out of his W, and set the wave in a way where you can basically just run him down. And he can't just throw a bunch of Qs and get away from you. ED dash into his turret range, okay? Um, and also, he's one of those champions where like he can't actually come back and kill you in close fights because... You know, that's just kind of how the champion works, right? He just heals a ton with his ultimate. So, like, if he just gets one kill, he's going to snowball to the point where you can't even destroy him anymore. Gangplank. The Gangplank matchup is quite boring because all he's going to do is just put a barrel down. And if you walk up, he just pulls the barrel up, damages you, slows you, right? The basic idea is level 1, you play safe. Level 2, you play safe. And from level 3 on, once you're pushing back from your turret... You just gotta pull him and all in him with your ghost. Make sure you destroy the barrels before he can use them on you because the slow is gonna let him kite you better. And he's gonna have his like, you know, fire auto attacks, which you can just use to um hit you, get a move speed, and get out of there, right? Um essentially just like you know, look for fights when your ghost is up, and when it's not up, don't even bother. When you have Strybreaker, the lane is just free to kill those, so your Strybreaker is a big power spec into him. But generally speaking, you're not gonna have a good time. If it's actually a skilled gangplank. Um, Gragas. Ugh, this is such a cheese matchup. He's so, like, good at trading. That if it's a good Gragas with face rush, you're probably not going to kill him. Um, to beat this lane, one, you have to make sure to, like, put yourself in a position where he can't just get his trades off on you. 
okay? Just try to kite him a bit. Try your best to, like, you know, um... Like, his barrel thing is one of the hardest things in the game to dodge because it's so easy to land, but try to make sure that, like, you're playing around with your position relative to the minions, okay? So if he's throwing it on you, he's also pushing his minions, okay? So just force him to shove his minions if he's gonna throw that on you every time, okay? Because that, if the blade is shoved, then you can basically just run it down with ghosts, okay? Um, the thing with Gragas is that a lot of them trade into you by belly slamming into you, okay? So... They drink their thing, they slam it down, they belly slam, phase rush, and they get out of there, right? So you have to understand the pattern of the specific Gragas player and pull when he belly slams into you. Because you can actually cancel it and just kill him. Without his belly slam, he is just the freest, freest, freest kill. This is until level 6. Once Gragas gets level 6, he can basically just disengage from you when he wants to, okay? It sucks that the Gragas has to use his ult to disengage, right? For him, right? Because his ultimate helps him a lot in skirmishes. But it's like he has that tool, okay? So if you don't kill him until level 6, then the lane is just going to be the most boring farm fest ever. And he's just going to be able to abuse you with pokes even more, okay? So just try to get a kill on him pre-6. And then post-6, just use your strike break and stuff to just keep out of the pressure. But if you can't do it, it's just going to be a super boring lane. Gwen. The issue with Gwen is that she's kind of easy to beat early on, right? But once she gets level 6, it's like... She can kill you even if she's like 3-4 kills behind, okay? So just, like, if you get her ultimate out, you should, you're should you probably going to lose the fight, okay? Because her ultimate actually sets up her Q, right? So just try to keep an eye out on her ultimate and her Qs, okay? And when she's going to use ult and Q at the same place, just flash out of it, okay? You have to avoid it because her healing actually gets crazy when she gets, like, her second and third proc of her ultimate combined with her cure it's like it's way too much healing okay so just like like 10 procs or something it's like crazy like that so just avoid it okay use your flash use your ghost because it's probably not gonna gonna be enough because she slows you with her ultimate right so just use your flash to avoid the the later portions of her ult and her q and you should be good to go okay and honestly it's better to just not fight her when she ults you just if you can ghost out but it's not always possible because her range with her ultimate is so great and she can actually just snipe you when you're low hp with her ultimate so yeah she's easy to kill earlier on but later on once she gets her ultimate she she's kind of hard to fight you just have to avoid her ult and her q at the same time which is crazy but it's what you have to do to beat her when she has her ult up the reason why this matchup is so difficult is because like all the stuff I described kind of sounds impossible, and it kind of is. She's just, she's way to get a fighting after level 6, 1v1. She kind of just is coded to beat you, and there's nothing you can take, no items or whatever, to just make the matchup easier. Jax. The Jax matchup is heavily, well, not too heavily, but it's very Jax favored, especially when he takes Ignite, because he just straight up beats you. He has way too much stats for you to cleave through, and sometimes he's kind of, you know, he's very difficult to just kite, because his abilities are all lower cooldown than yours. Level 1. Q him, don't let him get, you know, when he's counter-striking the wave, just Q him, Q spam and try to poke him down. Make sure to also hit the minions, because you cannot give Jax level 2, okay? You have to take prior of the lane and keep it. And while he's farming, try to get good trades into him. Never open with Q. If you open with Q, he's just going to jump on you, counter-strike and beat you down, okay? And if he has a good night, he just straight up kills you, okay? So yeah, just try to bait his counter-strike and then use your E when he uses uh, towards the end of his counter-strike so it doesn't stun you, you can run out of it, whatever. Just play around baiting his counter-strike and kiting him, because, like, if you don't kite Jax, he straight up just kills you because of his passive auto attack speed and stuff like that. He's way too much stats. Level 6, he's very tanky and he does a ton of damage, but, like, that's one of your power spikes against him, too. Like, if he messes up level 6 and he just Qs on top of his counter-strike, you can just E him, kite him down, and kill him level 6. But, like, it's just kind of difficult to get to that point okay strikebreaker is great into him you never want to go triforce into a lot of these matches where it's difficult by the way because triforce is really bad at like 1v1s whereas stride isn't okay so yeah i think that's pretty much it up next lucian don't stand between like behind a minion because he's just gonna you know use his lightning shot or whatever his q i think and then just poke you down with it constantly so just don't do that if you can try to look for pulls once you pull him he's quite an easy kill but the issue is that like you know, he, he he does a ton of damage, like, like while you get to him. So it's like, just play safe and look for pull fights. Go for Tobbies instantly. You need the Conqueror build, by the way, like second win and stuff like that with D Doran's Blade, Doran's Shield. 
So yeah, just play it safe, play it until you're level 3, and just look for pulls, and look for all-ins once you get your, all your abilities. Quinn, same kind of deal, just play it safe early. She can actually kind of peel herself quite well with her headbutt, but if what you have to do is pull her and don't hit her. Just walk behind her, okay? Pull her, ghost, and walk behind her, and then go for an RW, and then just fight it out from there. Because if you pull her and then she headbutts against you, then you just made it so that there's still a distance you have to walk to get to her, okay? So it's like, that's more damage you can get off on you without you being able to hit her even once. So that's not really the best thing at all. So just, you know, pull her, ghost behind her, and then start hitting her. And after that, like, because she's headbutted you in, like, you know, towards her and turret, it's easier for you to get on top of her because she's not really walking straight to safety. She's kind of walking around kind of aimlessly. So it's harder for her to kite you, and it's easier for you to kill her. So just play like that. Rise, honestly, just be patient. This guy sucks until super late game. He's very abusable by the jungler, but the basic idea is you don't want to stand near your minions while he's eating them because then he just gets the Q damage off on you too and it's just really high amounts of damage as poke. Just wait until you have all your abilities and just go for all-ins when you have ghost. Like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but ghost is like the solution to like 90% of these matchups. Imagine if we didn't use ghost, huh? But yeah, um, just wait until you have ghost and just run him down. He's quite run downable. His W stun range is actually the same range as your E, so when he's stunning you in that animation, you can just pull him and get him towards you, and then when he ha act when he's doing his abilities, just get a W on him so you can just keep up with him. Sharpbreaker is huge into this matchup, just massive, just absolutely massive. Make sure you get it, use it. And there is the chance that he just ults away while you're fighting him, but you should be doing so much damage that like, like you just kill him before he ults away, okay? So yeah, and by the way, if you pull him, if you still have your pull, right, you can actually cancel his ultimate, okay? So you can use your pull to cancel his ult. So, yeah. Tom Kinch, I've written it up, not, not written I've done a big matchup video on him, combined with, as I said, Tom Kinch, Yorick, Volibear, Wukong, and Vayne, actually, in my Know Your Enemy playlist. Just go check that if you want a more detailed breakdown of this. But basically, you have to kill him early on. Early on, Tom Kinch doesn't really stand too much of a chance against Darius, especially because of our upgraded W, so just kill him early on. But if you can't kill him early, you'll never be able to beat him, because once he gets Anathema's Chains, he is impossible to beat in a 1v1. So yeah, um, just beat him early, because otherwise you're never going to be able to get to him. Um, in a teamfight setting, if nobody else has Serpent's Fang, you might have to get it just for your team, because without Serpent's Fang, Tom Kinch's tankiness is actually just ungodly, just how just disgustingly OP he is. So Serpent's Fang, if nobody else can get it. But yeah, that's only after laning phase. In laning phase, just kill him early. Like I said, you know, um, he can't really do too much against you. Even with his Tongue Lash, I mean, you gotta just kite his Tongue Lash. You just hide behind your minions so he doesn't hit you with it. But you do just beat him straight up. So yeah, that's your own silver lining. Teemo, um, quite a difficult matchup because his bond is very annoying to deal with. And if the Teemo player is actually intelligent, then he's never he's just gonna keep poking you, use his ultimate properly. And just make it very difficult for you to get kills on him, but not impossible. If you're full HP and he's full HP, you will beat him in the all-in 100% of the time, okay? As long as you don't waste your auto attacks during his blind. That's another big thing. So, pull him. If he has blind on you while you're pulled, then go straight into Q, EQ, okay? But if you pull him and he has no blind on you, do auto W and then Q, okay? When he has blind on you, don't auto him, okay? Just don't auto attack him when he has you blinded. Just go for, like, Qs or just put yourself in a position where you can get more auto attacks out after the blind. Always take Sweeper into this matchup because you don't want to step into shrooms. It just helps him kite you out better. Strawbreaker is huge in this matchup. So, yeah. Yorick. Oh, Yorick is such an annoying matchup to deal with. You kind of have to... I've broken this matchup down along with Tom Kench, Wukong, Vladimir, and Vayne. In my Know Your Enemy playlist, just go check the video out, there's his worst matchups. The basic idea into the Yorick matchup is that he alone can't beat you, but him and his maidens destroy you. So, you have to basically not get hit by his, um, his E. The thing, not his E, but like, the thing that aggroes the minions and stuff on top of you, okay? So, you have to make sure to avoid that, and to avoid that, you have to kind of just walk sideways in relation to the Yorick, because that's just how, like, the hitbox of the ability is. It's way easier to do with Ghost, and once you've avoided it, he's just the freest of the freest kills, okay? But the thing is, Yorick's Cage is very good at setting that up, okay? And funnily enough, because his W or whatever, like, I'm gonna call his E the Cage and his W the slow thing. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, okay? His W sets up his E, 
and his E sets up his W, okay? So a trick I do, and this works sometimes in, even against the best Yorks, is to get hit by the cage, right? If he cages first, okay, stay in it. And when he throws his W out, just flash towards him and ghost, okay? You will kill him because he no longer has his cage to work with. His minions are not aggroed onto you. They're not dealing extra damage, dealing, doing extra damage. So you can just kill him with your ghost. Even if you flash you have to go to, you know, keep up with him. So, yeah, um... There's not really anything specific you can build into him, just that you gotta play it in a way where you don't lose the lane. If you lose the lane, there's nothing you can do to just beat him. You can go Anathema's Chains to have somewhat of a better time into him, but like, when Yorick gets ahead, he scales so fast that like, that's, that's not gonna do anything. Warwick, you have to kite this guy. Kite, 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 kite. Never go for extended fights against him early on. Level 1, he just completely shreds you. Try to cue him by the very edge of your cue, just the very edge. But like, just be careful, because if he bites and gets on top of you, then he's going to destroy you. So if you can't reliably land that, you don't trust yourself, or you just don't, this guy's too good, I guess. This Warwick top is so hard to play, right? Just stay away from him. Level 3, you can kind of just kite him out with your ghost and kill him. But the issue is level 6. Level 6, he just straight up beats you because of his ultimate and all works. So just get anti-heal, get some tommies, and get a bit of MR as well. Just... There's so much stuff you have to get against him. If you want to beat him 1v1, Devon Sunder works wonders into him. Shredderberg is also great. Triforce is horrible into Warwick. Um, the thing about this matchup is that Warwick is just useless outside of lane, right? So as long as you can keep up with him in that you're in the same fight as him, you will do 10 times better than him, just way more use, okay? So just, he's free stacks, basically. So whenever he's in a fight, pull him, stack on him, and kill his team, okay? Warwick is rarely useful in teamfight scenarios. Okay, <clears throat> we're now on to the impossible matchups. These matchups are just so disgusting to play, and you're probably just gonna not gonna lose. You're probably not gonna win against them. And the best you can do most of the time is just to stay even, or like you know, even as in fifty CS behind. Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is such a difficult matchup because if you step into his like range of his turrets, you just get blown up instantly. Right. What you have to do is pull him and one-shot him, okay? When you pull him, he's very one shot but it's just that he's very difficult to actually just, you know, um, like he has a stun grenades and his W, which are really annoying to actually get to him, okay? What you can do is like run towards him and when he throws his grenade out, just flash towards him and just go for the fight and kill him. You can only do this when he has no Zhonyas, by the way. No Zhonyas and no stopwatch. When he throws his grenade out, just flash towards him, go stop, one-shot him, okay? And he's very one-shotable, okay? So there's how you can kill him in like a normal scenario. MR is great, but it's just not enough, man. His turrets do so much damage. And at some point, unless you've killed him two, three times before six, where you can just stack so much MR that he doesn't do any more damage, he will get Zhonya. So once you get Zhonya, it's like, you're basically just doomed in trying to fight him alone, right? Because he's just going to put his big like turret down, put his W, E, and then go Zhonya. And that's just going to do so much damage while you're trying to just stand around fight his turrets, so once he gets to that point, you can't really beat him in all-ins anymore. Good news is he's so squishy that, like, he should be very one-shotable by your team, okay? But just, at some point, he's just gonna outscale you in, like, you know, 1v1s, and you won't be able to match him anymore, so that sucks. On the bright side, um, if there's a fight outside of lane, like, and you get to it first, you should be able to do more than him, because he takes kind of time to put his turrets in the best position and stuff, so it's like, you're kind of better in more aggressive and mobile fights, whereas he's better if the fight's top lane. He's more of a defensive era denial champion. So, yeah. Jace. This is such a weird matchup because if the Jace is bad, he's so free. But if he's good, you can never touch him at all. The basic idea is um, you have to kind of play it like Quinn. Pull him, walk behind him, ghost, and just, you know, run around him. But if he has phase rush, he's just going to, like... You know, you pull and walk by him. He's gonna hand form, hit you, after phase rush, and just you know hit you back and keep kiting you. But the good thing is that once you get tobbies, and like there's a window of time, you get tobbies, and before he gets eclipse, where you just win fights. Okay, so you have to beat him and kill him in this window. Okay, between tobbies, after tobbies, and before eclipse, his eclipse. If you don't beat him at this point. You're probably not going to do too much against him. 
until it's hyper late game where you get Strybreaker. But the thing with Jace is that if he just gets ahead in lane, he's just going to roam, get a bunch of kills, and be way too fed to deal with, okay? But this is only the best Jace players, okay? The worst Jace players are more so difficult to win because they're basically just another ranged matchup. Strybreaker is huge in the tomb, but the base, best Jace is just to show you, especially in high elo. <sighs> the last matchup, Jesus, 50 minutes of just non-stop talking. Vayne. The vein matchup is super, super annoying, and it's even been more annoying lately because they're starting to understand how to play. The basic ideas with the matchup is this, okay? Um, you have to play super safe and only go for anything once you land a pull. Without a pull, you're not going to do anything to Vayne. Trust me, you will not touch her. You will not hurt her. She just has way too much move speed and way too much in her kit to just peel herself off and kite you. Once you get Strybreaker, she's pretty killable, but if she has Shield Blow, then you not you don't even have the damage to one-shot her. So you, once she has Shield Blow, you actually need Serpent's Fang to one-combo her, but even then, it's like she'll just condemn you and one-tap you, so it's just the most annoying matchup ever. Honestly, just try to just wait for help from your jungler, because she's very abusable. You do actually beat her early game, right? Until, like, until you guys get your items, you're actually stronger than her in all in. so just... Look for pulls, turns of those into all ins, and try to kill her over and over again. Because once she gets her items, then you will never do anything against her. Like, just straight up. She's coded to beat you, okay? The best you can do is either wait for a jungler or kill her early and try to do something with your team before she gets into her more powerful state. So, yeah. Um, obviously, the armor items like Tobbies and stuff works wonders. But, yeah. Anyway, that is pretty much it for these matchups. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Um, boom. <laughs>